Welcome to this Property Hub University course. I'm Rob B. So, what are we going to cover this evening? We're going to look at what is inflation. We're going to look at what causes long-term inflation. And then we're going to look at why inflation is good for leveraged property investors. So, what is inflation? Well, typically, the most common type of inflation that you'll you'll hear of is consumer price inflation. And that's what the government measures, or the Bank of England. And the Bank of England is targeted around keeping inflation at a certain level, which we'll come to. And inflation is... is measured against the number of items and it's normally like a basket full of items so it changes from time to time what's in there but the price of say a loaf of bread a pint of milk and that's measured and then inflation is reported every single month and we get that information and sometimes it makes the headlines you know if inflation is particularly high just like it is at the moment and then you have asset price inflation which is similar but not the same and that's assets that are going up in value because of inflation let's have a look at first of all how inflation works and it impacts us on a day-to-day -day level so, if you had £100 in 1914, if you kept hold of that money today, it's in real terms, it's buying power, that would be 85 pence today. If you think of a pint of milk, 50 years ago, a pint of milk was still a pint of milk. And 50 years ago, a pint of milk may have cost you, say, 5 pence. Today, a pint of milk, depending on where you buy it, might be 60 pence. So the physical item hasn't changed, but the price of it has changed because of inflation. Your money is eroded over time because of inflation. So even at £100 in the year 2000, the 10 of millennium, £100 then, you know, you feel, you feel good. If you just kept it, it's eroded in value. And today it's worth £56. So what causes long-term inflation? The big one, it says printing money, but most of us will know it as quantitative easing. And actually, it's not really printing money. There's no physical money printed. It's actually money creation. And money is created, and if you have a lot of something, it's worth less. So if you say it's a really hot day and there's only one water supply and that water supply is bottled water supply taps don't work the only place you can buy um water is is from this one place now if that is the case then the price of water would be very expensive but because water is plentiful and we make more and more of it and it's in taps and you can buy it from multiple places actually it doesn't cost that much and that's because more and more water is created so the true value of it is a is eroded now the point is, is if you have a lot of something and it's plentiful, it erodes the value of that money. And if you print more and more money, its true value is, is worth less. And that causes inflation. Now, in the UK, our target is 2% per year. Now, even if we hit our target of 2% a year, which sounds very measured, that would half the value of your money every 20 years. So if you left your, let's say you had £100,000 in the bank today, if you left it in the bank, its real value, even though the number 100,000 is the same in 20 years time, its purchasing value, like those numbers we saw before, is halved. So today 100,000 might buy you a Lamborghini, but in 20 years time, it may buy you you know, a, a premium car, maybe a good BMW, but you wouldn't be able to buy a Lamborghini in 20 years time. Inflation has taken place. So you've got £100,000 today, that buys you a Lamborghini. That same 100000 in 20 years time buys you a good BMW. What's happened is inflation. But property is inflation resistant because property values tend to at least keep up with inflation. And actually, if you look over the long term, it depends what time period you select. But if you look at a long term date range on property, property tends to outperform inflation on average by about 2%. Last time I looked, it was about 1.8, 1.9%. But let's just say 2%. So property goes up in value, not just in line with inflation, but actually outperforms it. Rents are, are really interesting. Rents are very, very consistent to keeping up with inflation too. So the two components that are important for most property investors, which is your rental income that you're receiving and the value of the property that you own, either keep up with inflation or beat inflation. So let's look at the benefits of inflation for leveraged property investors. And there's a reason why we say leveraged. That's the real key here. Inflation is okay. 
for property investors, as we've seen, because if you just buy cash, you own the asset, it outperforms inflation and you get rental income, which at least matches inflation. So that's quite good. But when you introduce leverage as well, it becomes phenomenal. So in this example, we're going to look at a £200,000 home. We're going to assume inflation of 2% per year. And if that took place, let's just say property didn't beat inflation, just matched it. But as we've heard, that property does beat inflation. After 10 years, your property would be worth 240,000. Now, the cash invested originally would be 50,000 in. Yes, you've got costs, but this is just to keep it simplified for an example sake. In those 10 years, your capital gain is 40,000 pounds. So you've invested 50, but if property goes up just the same as inflation, your property is worth 240. So you've had a capital gain of 40 now, because you haven't put 200k in and you've only put 50k in, you've nearly doubled your money over that, that period of time. So because of leverage, you are really protecting yourself against inflation and actually you are completely outperforming inflation. Now remember, this is a very, very conservative example because this is just matching inflation. But what we know is that property outperforms infl inflation over the long term when it comes to house prices and what's not mentioned here at all is you'll also receive a rent rental income as well but what's even better is the fact that inflation helps you on the upside it increases your asset value over time and then property as we've heard will outperform inflation as well so that's really really good but actually inflation erodes the value of your debt as well so if you have debt against that property your debt is devaluing in this example, you've got a mortgage of £150,000. Now, in 10 years' time, the real value of that £150,000 has changed. If you've got an interest-only mortgage, it will still be £150,000. But what's changed is that it's no longer, in today's term, worth £150,000. We've heard that after 20 years, it would have halved. So it says the value after 10 years. But if you do the value after 20 years, that mortgage, in real terms, is like £75,000. Because it no longer will cost as much. So 150,000 is like, you know, a, a very high flying executive salary. In 20 years time, it would be a well-paid job. So the value of your asset goes up, but the value of your debt is decreasing at the same time. And that's super, super powerful. The value after 10 years is 240, your mortgage is 150, your loan to value has fallen to 62.5%, but you haven't paid off any debt. Now, that's great because that's the property going up, but that 150,000 is worth less as well in real terms. And that's more important than just the properties going up. And that's why leverage is so important. Yes, leverage allows you to maximize your returns. Yes, leverage allows you to build a bigger investment pot, a bigger property portfolio. But the fact that during the time that your property prices are, are going up, at the same time, your mortgage values are going down, even if the number doesn't change. So asset price inflation over the last 10 years. Over the last 10 years, it's averaged 2.7% inflation in the UK. It's been higher recently, but it's way above the Bank of England target of 2%. And it's, and it's way, way above right now. It's gone up 31%. House prices have gone up 63% at the same time. The FTSE All, All Share Index has gone up by 100% during that time and gold 180% but you don't leverage, well, it's very hard to leverage the bottom two, and most people don't leverage the bottom two. But when you introduce leverage to property, you can multiply that return, and that debt is being eroded at the same time. And it's because of leverage, and obviously the rental return that you get as well, gold doesn't give you a return, you can get dividends from the FTSE. Because of that, house prices and property investment is far more attractive. But what's important to see is that quantitative easing increases asset prices across the board and it, it out helps assets outperform inflation. And those who own assets are rewarded and those who don't, unfortunately, are punished. And why have asset prices grown faster than consumer prices? Well, low interest rates is one, but the biggest driver is money printing or what we call quantitative easing. Okay, so as a long-term property investor, you don't need crazy rates of inflation. When we looked at that example, it was just 2% and we saw how impactful it was on property and wealth creation. That's the thing, right? Inflation just creeps upon you. It's really high at the moment and everyone notices it, but it's not a new thing. Inflation has been present ongoing 
and slowly but surely it takes from you if you're not an investor, if you don't hold assets. If you hold assets, it aids you. But if you don't, it takes from you. And if you really want to be smart, invest in assets that you can leverage and then you're really winning.